Hello everybody, Dr. Dan here, and I'll be your professor for History 2010 at the University of Toledo, Spring 2018 online. So uh, before we get started to contact me, you can use my email, which is daniel.french at utoledo.edu, and that email address is on the class website. You can also call me at 419-345-7220. You can call me anytime or send me a text, and if you text me, make sure you let me know what class you're in because I teach uh, two classes at the university. So that's how you get in touch with me. Feel free to reach out anytime you need help. I want you to be successful and I'm sure you will be. Uh, you're gonna need to get this textbook. This is Of the People, Oxford University Press. This is volume one to 1877 and it's the third edition. It's available at the University of Toledo Bookstore and it's also available at amazon.com and I was just on Amazon this morning. There are used copies out there for like 15 or 16 bucks, so it won't set you back too far. Uh, the other thing you need to do is uh, when you log in, look at the syllabus, and uh, it's got all the rules for the class. It's basically all the standard stuff. Don't steal, cheat, lie, uh, don't uh, uh, plagiarize, and also, uh, there are links for various resources at UT for technical support, accessibility, that sort of thing. It's all straightforward, all stuff that I'm sure you, use, you are used to before. Um, so uh, take a look at those things to get started. Now we are going to go through about a chapter a week in the text, and you're going to need the textbook for the first week of class, so that's this week I'm assuming and uh, uh, we're going to go through the first chapter, so make sure you have the textbook. The other thing to make note of is on the syllabus there are some course objectives, and I won't go, th go through every one of them, but uh, what I want you to take away from this class is uh, think about the ability to construct a historical argument, and basically what that means is be able to, um, uh, be able to talk in terms of um, uh, sources, so primary sources, secondary sources, if you make a claim that, that Christopher Columbus uh, sailed to the New World in 1492, then you need to know that there's evidence to back up that argument. So in Columbus's case, uh, there are letters he wrote to the king uh, about his voyage and there's other evidence out there. So, so you need primary sources for a historical argument. Understand the difference between a primary and a secondary source. So a primary source is a document like you know something Columbus would write or something from the government, a government document, where a secondary source uh, might be a book writing about Columbus's voyage or, or, uh, or uh, perhaps a journalist writing an article about a government document. That's really kind of a secondary source. So, you know, sources don't have to be pieces of paper. They don't have to be texts. Uh, some sources can be artifacts like uh, 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 tapestries or, or dishes or plates or statues or that sort of thing. So understand what a source is and the difference between a primary and a secondary source. That's pretty important. Uh, the other things that I'd like you to pay attention to as we do the readings all through the semester is pay attention to race uh, and gender and um, uh, also things like language and customs because Everything that we experience today in society is, uh, is a reflection of past history because, you know, the present is just the past, the history being developed still. So it's kind of fun to look at it that way. So, you know, when we read about the slave codes in the 1600s in the Carolinas, uh, we start to see uh, these narratives on race and, and how views of race begin to form and also with gender and gender roles. The, uh, the fact that the, the man is working outside the house and the woman is working in the house, you know, these are gender roles that, that come across uh, from the old world, come across from England that are still with us today. So that's kind of the fun part of history, not just studying like, you know, dead white guys, but, but all of the remnants of their culture that they left behind that still affect us today. And, and we're going to read about religion, certainly, and, and we're going to read about language. So, you know, we speak English here because of the English roots of North America, but when you go to Quebec and speak French, we're going to learn about uh, the French and, and their colonies in Canada early on. So all of this stuff has a reason, and it's, it's cool to read about and, and understand. Uh, the other thing I want you to know about is capitalism. 
I think you know what capitalism is, but if you don't, it's, it's the economic system that we live under. So like free market enterprise and basically what it comes down to in a capitalist system is that there's private ownership of land and the means of production. That comes over from England as well early on when the first settlers uh, you know, land in Jamestown in, in, in the early 1600s. So pay attention to capitalism and, and, and think a lot about economics as you read through this first chapter because everything going on with uh, uh, these different voyages and exploration and, and colonialism all has to do with economics and people wanting to make money or countries wanting to make, wanting to make money. So uh, know about capitalism. Know about liberalism. It's pretty important. Most of you probably haven't heard of it before. And it's not really talking about liberals or liberal behavior in the sense that we talk about it today, but liberalism is really a doctrine of government that comes from a guy named John Locke. He was Scottish. You're going to read about him in the late 1600s in South Carolina as he works on the South Carolinian Constitution. The reason Locke is important is because a lot of his writings and his beliefs are responsible for uh, the, the core of our Bill of Rights and our Constitution. So I, I think it's important that you know about John Locke and liberalism because we're still sorting that all out today. In other words, you know, what's the function of the federal government? Is it to make sure people are safe? Is it to make sure people can do whatever they want? Is it all about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? All of this stuff really comes from John Locke's writing in 1690, The Two Treatises of Government. And it's, uh, we're not going to get into the specifics of it, but I just want you to know that today's arguments about how much power the federal government has are, are, are still... Um, uh, the, uh, the arguments that, that came from John Locke's writings and the writings of others along the way, such as Madison and, and Jefferson and so on. But uh, pay attention to that stuff because it'll, it'll make the class more interesting. So um, that's what I have for you today. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. As I said before, feel free to reach out, get in touch with me anytime if you have any questions. It's going to be a great semester. Be safe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.